So let's continue our discussion on how we determine what the sequence of amino acids is inside our protein molecule. Now earlier we discussed a process known as the Sanger degradation and this process basically allows us to determine what the first amino acid is in our sequence. Now when we actually apply the Sanger degradation we hydrolyze the entire protein we break it down into its constituents amino acids. So once the protein undergoes the Sanger degradation, the entire protein basically is broken down into its amino acids and so we have no way of knowing what the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and so forth amino acid in our sequence is. So the Sanger degradation is only useful in determining what the first amino acid in our sequence is. A much more useful procedure in which we do not have a hydrolysis reaction, meaning the protein is not broken down into its constituent amino acids, is known as the Edmund degradation. So this process involves a controlled stepwise cleavage of amino acids and this can be used effectively on peptides that consist of 20 to 30 amino acids in length. So this method basically uses a molecule known as phenylisothiocyanate to basically break the first peptide bond between amino acid number one and amino acid number two. So once our protein undergoes one Edmund degradation, we only break one peptide bond and we determine what the first amino acid is in our sequence. And if we conduct a second, a third, a fourth Edmund degradation, we can basically determine what the second, the third, the fourth amino acid in our sequence is and that is why this degradation is so much more useful than the Sanger degradation. The Sanger only allows us to actually determine what the first amino acid is and we hydrolyze the protein into its constituent amino acids but as we'll see in the Edmund degradation, this does not hydrolyze our protein into its constituent amino acids and that's exactly why we can continually use it to determine the sequence of our amino acids in that protein. So to see what we're talking about, let's look at the reaction mechanism and let's suppose the peptide that we are examining is a tripeptide. So we have one, two, three amino acids in our peptide chain. So we take our tripeptide and we mix it with the phenyl isothiocyanate, which is this molecule here. A reaction takes place and we basically label the first amino acid on our chain. We take this entire molecule and we add it onto the nitrogen found on the first amino acid and this molecule is known as a thiourea. So the phenyl isothiocyanate is used to basically label the first amino acid in our sequence. So once this reaction takes place, we can then use some type of acid that is present in solution to protonate the oxygen on the first carbonyl group of amino acid number one. So we use an acid to protonate this oxygen to produce this molecule here and now an intramolecular reaction will take place to form a five-membered ring. So the purpose of adding this group group was is to basically take the sulfur and use it in an intramolecular fashion. So in step three we have this acting as a nucleophile creating a five member ring attacking this carbon of the carbonyl displacing the pi bond forming this intermediate that contains a positive charge on the sulfur and this five membered ring as shown. So this is basically amino acid three, amino acid two, and this is amino acid one or what's left of amino acid one. 
Now, in step number five, our base, the conjugate base to the acid that basically was used up in step two, the conjugate base, let's suppose B is for some arbitrary base, deprotonates this nitrogen to basically break the sigma bond between the H and the nitrogen forming this pi bond that at the same time kicks off the pi bond here, placing these two electrons onto this sulfur here. So we basically form this intermediate that no longer contains the positive charge on our sulfur. Now in step number five, instead of reprotonating this nitrogen, we now protonate this nitrogen to basically turn this poor leaving group into a much better leaving group. And in the next step, our double bond, the pi bond is reformed or formed between this oxygen and this carbon. So remember, there used to be a double bond between this oxygen and this carbon as shown here, and now the pi bond is being reformed. At the same time, we are kicking off the good leaving group, this entire dipeptide. So we form this intermediate, that is basically this region here, and we also form the dipeptide. And this is a very important step. It's a key step in the Edmund decoration because we have this dipeptide that we can take out of our mixture and then we can react it once again in another Edmund degradation to basically determine what the second and third amino acid in our sequence is. So let's suppose we take this dipeptide out of our solution and now we take this intermediate and we mix it with a base. What the base does is it deprotonates this oxygen to form this molecule. And then we take this molecule and we basically mix it with hydronium in the presence of uh, in, the, in the presence of water and notice when this step takes place, we already took out our dipeptide. So basically this is hydrolyzed because we are in the presence of our hydronium and water and we produce this final molecule. Now this step actually involves a series of steps, but because I didn't have any room, I didn't show those steps. We transform this molecule into this molecule and now this molecule contains the R side chain group that our first amino acid had. So this is the R1 that comes from this amino acid number one. And once we collect this molecule, we can basically analyze it and determine what this side chain group is. And once we determine what the side chain is, we can then determine what the first amino acid in our sequence was. And then we take our dipeptide and we basically react it in the same exact way in another second admin degradation to determine what the second second amino acid is and we and we can continually do this to basically determine what the entire sequence is in our peptide. 